It's uh, 848. If you look to the west, it's 845. Meeting in order at 845. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Tom LeBange. Uh, Mr. Reyes is expected to join us momentarily. This is the Arts and Parks Health and Aging Committee. Uh, our clerk is here to uh, call the item in order. Good. And what I'd like to do is make a telephone call to see how far my colleague is from us. And is the CLA's office here right now? That's all right. We've got a phone here. Okay. Thank you. So talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Due to a ride, there's a lot of cards here that I want to give everybody an opportunity to speak. As chair of the committee, uh, when there's more than uh, 10 cards, I ask for one minute public comment. But if you need additional time to speak, I let it flow. Try to make your points uh, to uh, the issue. Right now, Mr. Clerk, would you call uh, this meeting to order? Item number one is a consideration of the Board of Recreation and Park Commissioners action of May 20th, 2011, relative to the proposed renovations of existing exhibit gallerias, outdoor area, restrooms, and associated improvements at the Autry National Center's Museum of the American West. On May 31st, 2011, the City Council adopted motion Huizar Reyes, asserting jurisdiction over this matter pursuant to Charter Section 245. This is a time limit file with the last day for council action of June 21st, 2011. Great. And I ask the uh, city attorney to explain for everyone the 245 issue. The matter is before this committee on a motion that was approved by council under Charter Section 245. A 245 motion allows the City Council to assert jurisdiction over an action that a commission took. Um, in this case, it was the action of the Department uh, of the Board and Recreation and Park Commissioners, which action was specifically under their lease with the Autry. Um, if the Autry proposes to make modifications to the structure valued at 25000 or more, or to the exterior of the structure valued at $5,000 or more, they have to seek the consent of the uh, Rec and Parks Commission um, before they can implement those modifications. And so on a rule, uh, on a Section 245 motion that has now been approved, it's before this committee t to hear public input and consider whether uh, to consider what to recommend to council about whether to um, approve or disapprove of the commission's action if the council approves of the commission's action it does not go back to the commission the action is final if the council does not act within 25 days the commission's action is, de is deemed final if the council disapproves with the commission's action it is sent back to the commission for the commission to decide whether it wants to do anything um, under its original jurisdiction. The council does not override the commission, cannot impose its own action, cannot take over the jurisdiction of what the commission has. So basically, with the, if there is a disapproval of the commission's action by council, it would go back to the commission for them to reconsider their action in light of council's disapproval. But the commission has the ultimate jurisdiction on what to do um, under the lease in terms of consenting or not to the uh, to the modifications. Thank you very much. And I don't know if that's all clear to you, but basically the council took the action. If we support the action of the Park Commission, then it stands. If we reject the action of the Park Commission, we send it back for consideration to the Park Commission for their deliberation, and they determine it. So I'm going to start the public hearing. Mr. Reyes is here. We thank you, Mr. Reyes. Appreciate uh, all your involvement here. Dr. Clyde Williams, Mark Kenyon. And hold on, Dr. Clyde Williams. Hold on a second, Mark. I want to ask Record Parks. Mr. Muckry's here and his staff. Give us a quick overview. I think that would help us, Mr. Reyes. I was anxious to jump into the public hearing, but let's hear from the, uh, the Parks Department, and let's hear from... The Autry, the applicant. It's a quick overview. 
Good morning, Council Members. Daryl Ford, Recreation and Parks. Just to be brief and uh, not to repeat too much what the City Attorney already told you, um, the uh, the Board took an action um, under its uh, the lease agreement that we have with the Autry to give its consent to, for the Autry to do improvements uh, to its facility in Griffith Park. And this is all pursuant to the terms of our lease agreement with the Autry Museum. So as the improvements were valued at over $25,000, they're required to to receive the board's consent, and that's the action that the board took. And the Parks Department supports that? Uh, yes, the board took an action approving. And the um, Parks Department supports that? The Parks Department supports that. Correct. That. Do you need to add anything, Mr. Muckery? John Kirk Muckery, General Manager, Department of Recreation and Parks. The board acted according to its rules and regulations. The president of our commission wanted me to come and assure you that prior to taking action, they did review the issue with Latham and Watkins, and previous, we had to recluse ourselves from making those decisions. That is not the case in this, in this thing. Latham and Watkins has not represented from our discussions the Autry for over a year and did not represent them in any, any way. So our board president could act on it. We had jurisdiction on this Charter Section 595. We have the ability to lease spaces. We dictate the terms and conditions. This has an existing lease. It's a museum. But I, I don't think that's before us, uh, but the issue, but I understand you're accommodated on that, but I appreciate that. So thank you, Recreation of Parks. I'd like to call the Autry just to say, give us an overview from Mr. Reyes and myself, the grant, the approval of the grant, what actually you're doing. And for a description, if you could say that the, the table that you sit on is that of the existing building that is there is this an expansion what is it there and if you could be to the point and brief this is what is before right uh mr chair i apologize for taking that call that was actually uh a senator de leon who wanted to give some insight in terms of the timing of the grant but we'll hear the proceedings and we'll go from there thank you mr chair my name is ed casey with the law firm of alston and bird uh autry's outside land use council i'm going to be very brief because i understand you want to hear more about the project and the grant but i just wanted to discuss two legal issues one is the nature of the consent under the ground lease the consent that shall not be unreasonably withheld says the ground lease here the grounds for withholding would be very very narrow because the work is on the inside of the building and the building is owned solely by the Autry. Number two, on CEQA grounds, because you'll see that there was a CEQA appeal filed by uh, certain groups. CEQA does not apply here, and the uh, Parks and Recs properly found that it was exempt for these reasons. One, building permits are exempt because they're ministerial. Two, the consent under the ground lease is not a discretionary approval because of what I just said. The grounds for withholding consent are very narrow as long as the work is consistent with the use. There is no grounds to withhold, therefore it's not a discretionary approval. One, one, one last thing is there are no future phases planned at this time. That is one of the main grounds for the CEQA appeal. There are none. Great. And anyone else quickly from the Autry would want to add? Not on the legal grounds. We want to discuss the project. Would these people already to the grant? The grant is a 6.6. .6. So give me the grant background on the grant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're asking me a question because I have to identify yourself. To yes, the $6.6 .6 million grant from the state of California. Mr. Finley, of the just for the record, you got to identify yourself. My name is Daniel Finley. I'm the president and chief executive officer of the Autry National Center. So the grant is at $6.6 .6 million that the Autry was awarded as part of their uh, Prop 84 uh, funding that they received. And, and it's interior to the existing building. Completely. Got it. Mr. Okay. Chair, I do have Chair. questions, Chair. but would you rather hear public comment first and then no, bring I them back? I want to ask either Record Parks or, okay. you know. We'll just go, okay. So this is about setting a record and understanding process and how we got here in, in relation to the grant. So my question to you is, why was the Southwest Museum and Casa Adobe not included in the grant application. I, I would like to defer to the city attorney here and, and ask the question, what I believe is properly before this committee is a discussion of the appropriateness of this capital improvement project within the Autry. 
within the Autry building. Mr. Finley. Can we digress into the larger issue that Mr. Reyes is raising? Mr. Finley, the fact that you don't want to answer this question. I didn't say that, sir, did I? But you're asking the city attorney for a reason not to answer. That's what I'm interpreting your question. Your question to the city attorney is that. I'm trying to understand why does he have to defer to the city attorney to answer the question? That was his question. I understand, but the question is why. I believe in any public hearing you're interested in keeping your comments germane to the issue. And the issue that's before us is the approval of a project at the Autry National Center. And if you wish to digress into the issue of the future of the Southwest building, that doesn't strike me as germane. I'm simply asking for an opinion from the city attorney if we can move into that topic. Well, I'll ask for that opinion as the chair. But I think, Mr. Reyes, if you want to just go through your questions and then look at that. If you don't want to answer that, okay. Okay, that's fine. I appreciate that. The next question for the Autry is what is the Autry's commitment and partnership with Autry and Southern Museum Casa de Adobe to operating the Southern Museum Casa de Adobe as a feasible and successful venue? Okay, well, I would just say, Mr. Reyes, as chair, and knowing what's on the agenda, I'd ask the city attorney because it's not on there. And I will gladly work with you if we want to agendize these questions in the future. What I believe is before us is a $6.6 million grant that they independently got approval from the state and awarded that grant. And I understand that, but I'm coming from the place that we are one city and that we are looking at the grant as a benefit to everybody, including Autry and including the beneficiaries and the community that you are serving. But I also have a responsibility to understand. I will gladly put it on the agenda. But to understand that that relationship to me is one of how we go into a positive direction in understanding where we're at. And so it's been difficult to reach that level of dialogue. So I feel compelled to ask these questions, not to embarrass, not to put anybody on the spot, not to get into a legal arm wrestle, but to create understanding of how we can move forward in a positive way to get to a solution. That's where I'm trying to get to. That's the nature of my question. Allow me to quote from the merger agreement between the Autry National Center and the Southwest Museum, page 9. The party shall use all efforts to build a new facility adjacent to the existing Autry Museum to expand exhibition space and audience for programs relating to the Southwest. In other words, back in 2003 when this agreement was entered into, the clear intention was for exhibition space and for programs related to the Southwest to be relocated to the Griffith Park campus. So let me do this. I want to put these questions for the record as you suggested, Mr. Chair, and then perhaps we can engage it. I feel right now that there's too much tension in the nature of the responses. I don't want to be there. I'd rather get to a solution. But I'll lay these questions for the record, and then we can move forward. My next question would be, in addition to this project, what other plans does Autry have for expansion at the Autry Museum? Next question is, what is your commitment to Southwest Museum and Casa Adobe and ensuring that the museum is operational and has access to the collection? And two more. Please bear with me, Mr. Chair. How soon can we get a copy of the complete expansion plan for the Autry? Is Southwest Museum and Casa Adobe included in the plans? And the last one, and this is to the city attorney. We have been told by the representatives from Autry that the July deadline is a hard deadline. My question is, have we been able in the past to get extensions on state grants? And that's my question to you, Madam Attorney. I've been speaking to Senator DeLeon, who represents the area, who is the sponsor of the bill by which these funds came, and I'm asking him for his point of view and his advocacy to address the needs of Autry and the needs of Southwest Museum and Casa del Adobe. But, Madam Attorney, have we had ever in the past extensions of state grants for deadlines? Proposition 84, it's its own bond measure. It has its own programmatic guidelines. 
So I do not know. No, no, I'm not about Proposition 84. I'm talking about other state grants that the city has applied for. Have we ever had extensions on grants? Um, there are extensions of several different deadlines. There, the first deadline is the application for the grant. Right. Generally, yeah. there has not been extensions for um, deadlines. We've never had an extension in the past. I, the I, don't, I don't know. I'm not Reckon Parks or the entity that has applied. Okay. Under certain circumstances, but, whether it's okay. specific to Prop 84 uh, or other no, state grants. Okay. The I just want to make sure that was on the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I address some of the issues? Well, I think what we want to do, I want to get the public comment, and I'm interested in what's on item number one. So we could address that at a future time. I think it's uh, what the council was very concerned about, I believe, was process and the inability for the people to be notified of a commission meeting due to some, quote, glitch by another city department other than recreation and parks, right. but ITA. That's what really motivated much mm -hmm. of the council to not consider this matter in full. So with that, unless there's anything press, I'm going to thank you. Please participate. Uh, if we have any questions, we'll call you up later. Uh, can I have... Uh, Dr. Williams, Mark Kenyon, and before you speak, I'm going to ask that Paul Habib from Council District 14 speak, representing Mr. Wezar. And is it, uh, I'm going to put Ms. Durant, Friends of the Southwest Museum. Excuse me, Ms. Duarte, Genevieve. Okay, Paul. Uh, good morning. Uh, on behalf of Councilman Jose Wezar, I uh, want to thank the committee today for uh, holding this public hearing to ensure that all voices are heard on this matter. As Councilman uh, Wezar has said, no matter where you stand on this is issue, the people deserve the right to be heard. And it is a fundamental part of our democratic process, and therefore we're very pleased that today this is taking place. Uh, we do want to particularly thank Councilman Labonge for not only agreeing to hold this committee, but for agreeing to hold it so quickly. And we want to thank Councilman Reyes for advocating for this hearing on the City Council floor earlier this week. As you discuss this matter before you today, uh, Council Member Wezar strongly urges that whatever you decide, that the committee send this back to the full council to be heard uh, prior to the end of the 21-day deadline associated with this 245 action. At this point, it would be advantageous for the City Council to make the final decision on this matter. Apart from this item, and uh, while a number of people are here, Council Member Wezar wants this committee to know, and the public to know, that restoring the Southwest Museum to a viable, accredited, and fully operational museum remains a top priority. The Councilman has been in negotiations with the Autry National Center and other potential partners to restore the Southwest Museum in Mount Washington. As you know, the Southwest Museum is the city's oldest and first museum, and in our eyes, its place in Los Angeles' future is as important as its place in Los Angeles' history. As we work with the Autry on restoring the Southwest Museum, we know there's plenty of work to be done, and we intend to do that. In fact, we want the people to know that we will continue and step up our negotiations in the coming days and months, coming days and weeks, to expedite that process so that we all have a better understanding of how that, to make that happen. Again, we thank you for hearing this item today, and we urge you to bring it back to Council for a full, full vote. Thank you very much. Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams. Okay. Uh, Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno, Northeast L.A. I recommend that you rescind, reject, or disapprove the decisions of the board regarding this particular project. Uh, I have eh, roughly 15 years experience in museums. I've been a research associate at the LA County Museum, but I'm also a member of the Autry Muse National Center. And just basically want them to comply with the terms and conditions of the land lease agreement and the merger agreement, a full and functioning Southwest Museum. This is just the tip of the iceberg, this particular project. Unfortunately, the Autry and the board chose to link the environmental aspects, the tribal aspects, the financial aspects, and the artifacts together and that was wrong thank you very much mark uh, thank you uh, uh, council members good morning my name is mark kenyon I, I live in mount washington and i'm here representing myself as well as the mount washington homeowners alliance and our over 600 members um, the first statement i want to make is that we, uh, there seems to be some uh, idea that we're somehow against the autry we're not against the autry we love the autry 
the thing we're against is the stealing of the uses of the Southwest Museum to, to take to Griffith Park without first disclosing what those uh, impacts are and if they are in fact negative to the future of the museum to mitigating those, uh, those negative impacts. Uh, we strongly disagree with the Autry's uh, impression that uh, you heard it actually at Council on Tuesday. At, on Tuesday, the idea was they have a, a, not a notice of exemption because there's no discretionary de decision. But clearly, the Rec and Parks meeting and this meeting are discretionary. The, the reason that it's not so narrow as they testified this morning is because, in fact, by putting the first Californians exhibit into the Autry and Griffith Park, and the Ethnobotanical Garden, those are existing uses at the Southwest, and, and, and I would urge you to, uh, to deny the decision of the Brecon Parks. Thank you, Mark. Hi, Council Members and President. My name is Genesee, and I am here to represent the youth of the Northeast. I'm an eighth grader at a Royal Seco Museum Science Magnet School, which is very close to the Southwest Museum. My school used to have a great program with, with the Southwest Museum, where the students would learn about American Indians and give tours. This amazing, this amazing, um, this amazing program no longer exists. When I was younger, I used to visit the Southwest Museum with my mom. It was fun learning about American Indians eating roast, roasted kernels during the Indian marketplace, and taking classes like basket weaving. I'm truly saddened that the youth of the Northeast, including my little brother, would no longer get to enjoy this. Because I know all of you support the youth of our educate support the youth and our education, I am pleading with you to save the his, this historic museum, especially since it's the first museum in Los Angeles. I feel it's your duty to preserve something so special to our community. If you if you you all will be my heroes if you do. Thank you very much. What's your brother's name? Sebastian. Sebastian, good to see you. Mr. Chair, you should know that uh, Ms. Hall, Janisa Hall, is sung at every memorial event we've had in the past four or three years in Cypress Park, sang it this past uh, weekend in Memorial Day in Highland Park. Uh, don't let her presence uh, fool you. She has a tremendous voice. If we could have done the national anthem and sang it, we would have asked her to do it this morning. But congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Daniel Young, Robert Brody, Ann Walnum, excuse me, Ann, and Olga Hall, please sit down and start talking. Uh, my name is Robert Brody. I'm uh, pleased to be here. Uh, as I live on Mount Washington, I've been a resident for over 25 years. My home happens to look down on the Southwest Museum. And as a resident, a past resident of the city of Philadelphia, which honors and cherishes its cultural heritage, I want to implore the council to please take in consideration that the decimation and the backturning by the Autry on their commitment to keep viable the Southwest Museum is an affront to every Los Angelino and every tourist and every child who was on a school bus that went to that museum. So I implore the council to reject the Parks Commission and, and their observations and their decisions because it was not based on anything that has to do, obviously, with the community and its welfare. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Good morning. I'm Ann Walnum, the co-founder of Friends of Southwest Museum Coalition. I also was a member of Southwest Museum for many years. I did a lot of volunteering there. I'm pleased to see some of the former staff members of the museum here today. I felt that they were our friends for the community. However, Autry's policies with the Southwest Museum were not helpful to the museum. After they closed the museum in 2006, they continued their conservation effort at the museum, which is an excellent effort. That's a real plus. They received many grants to carry out that effort. The other thing they did was to turn the museum into a warehouse. The FEMA grant by which they fixed the tower also had provided or would have provided funds for off-site storage. Instead, the museum has been used as a warehouse for five years. It's very clever, but it has worked against the needs of the community. I urge you to, in some way, give us back our museum. Thank you. Thank you. Good 
morning, council members. I wanted to ask you something. For the record, state your name, please. Oh, my name is Olga Hall, and I'm with the Friends of the Southwest Museum. And I wanted to bring this home. If at your house someone came to, uh, telling you that they were going to help you in your house with your things and everything. Excuse me, Sergeant. The man who's in the kneeling right there, <laughs> sir. Sir, sir you listen? I will. Hold on. Your time will go back to go back. Will the gentleman, if he wants to talk to people, talk to him outside the room? The acoustics here do bounce up, but we can't hear the public comment. Mr. Clerk, will you throw this back to one? Thank you. Olga, thank you. Okay. I wanted to bring it home. If someone came out of uh, as a friend into your house and told you uh, they were going to help you and everything, and then they turn around and start taking the things that are valuable to you, what would you do? Would you love them? Would you uh, serve them? No, you wouldn't, because you would defend as hard as you could to not lose your possessions, to not lose that that is dear to you. And that's what we are doing. Our is coming into a community and taking what is belongs to the community. They have to have top-notch lawyers, top-notch CEO, and Mrs. Audrey over and over and over has run over the communities to get what she wants. This is not fair. This is not the law. You have to follow the law. There's no hurry into getting the grant. There's always time, and it cannot be lost. You're already losing uh, 20 million so far by giving the R3 prime land in a park, in the park, in the R3. And in the next 30 years, you'll lose 15 more. Add that to $25 million for the, um, for the Southwest Museum Metro. Thank you. Station. Thank you, Ms. Hall. So, thank you for your comments. Seven million Darryl, is nothing. Daryl Ramos Young, if that's correct. Tony Butler. Jesse Rosas. Nicole Prosser. Please begin speaking. Daryl Ramos Young. I'm a resident of Highland Park. According to Levin and Associates' website, the architect for the Archery Museum, um, from June 30th, 2010, they identified that they are looking forward to a $7 million renovation of the Autry Museum, which is very similar to the project which is now on the plate for $6 million. So according to the Autry's own architect, a year before even having announced um, being announced as an awardee to this grant, there was already a, a commitment to raise the funds. So um, from my understanding as an outsider looking at this, um, the renovation is going to take place no matter what because there's a will from the Autry to improve their uh, Griffith Park um, facility. The Autry National Center is promoted as a innovative institution that is now spread across three different sites with a really a world-renowned collection. The integration of the sites and the collections should be presented as a whole when being reviewed. So if collections are moved from one location to another, it'd be really um, provide the best uh, um, best foot forward for the Autry to explain how all impacts to the Burbank uh, neighborhood, to the Highland Park neighborhood, and to the Griffith Park neighborhood are being addressed um, for environmental impacts. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Tony Buck. I reside in Glacill Park. <coughs> Underneath the technical issue before you, the reality in Northeast LA is that this pits the affluence and political clout of the Autry against a multicultural and diverse, underrepresented group of people in Northeast Los Angeles. As long as the Autry can blow off Northeast LA and the Southwest Museum, they're going to do so because it's good economics. Unfortunately, it is also very poor politics. Northeast Los Angeles is an unhappy cluster of communities. Our only practical hope is to rely on our elected officials to broker some kind of a deal 
that allows the Southwest Museum and its collection to survive and have the ability to ultimately thrive while guaranteeing the integrity of, of the Autry Museum. To that end, we are entrusting our fate to our elected officials, specifically Councilman LaBange, Councilman Reyes, and Councilman Quizar. And I think we have to rely on the political pragmatism of all of you, uh, particularly Councilman LaBange, who, after all, who but Tom LaBange could give Johnny Grant a run for his money. Thank you. Thank you. God bless Johnny Grant. Nicole. Good morning. My name is Nicole Possard. I am a chair of, co chair of the Friends of the Southwest Museum Coalition. I live in Highland Park for 20 years, um, having a wonderful experience in our historic communities of, of the Arroyo. What we're really talking about today is a, um, a project that was approved based on a built house of cards. And the facts of those cards that are holding up the approval don't really stand up to merit. Um, there are problems with the way the uh, project was processed. Uh, it was not disclosed as a full project, although Recreation and Parks has from the Autry before they did their uh, environmental clearance uh, what their entire project was. Um, they did not take that into account. They did not also take into account the general plan, which has a specific policy um, to protect the Southwest Museum and its historic location. We are asking that this be carefully looked at so that it, we are not moving the Southwest Museum from its original location and depositing it six miles in uh, Griffith Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jesse Rosas. I'm precise in Highland Park, and I'm part of the Friends of the Southwest Museum. The reason we're here today is because we want to uh, really actually to succeed as well as the Southwest Museum. But, you know, the thing is we want actually to, to be co committed to the Merging agreement they made to the promise of the Southwest Museum. Eventually, he had not been complied with any of those requests. They promised when they signed the agreement. <clears throat> People say that we don't like it and we anti actually we not, because this is a win-win situation, and we want to develop the Northeast area. Why? Because it's economic, economic visible. We have all the transportation that we need. We have the Metrolink, as well. We fight so much for the for the goal line to have a station right there on the museum. We have the the NTA. We have the freeways. So we have all the abilities to bring the economic development in the area. Is not happening. And those six million dollars is not going to do any good to the Griffin Park or to the to the Noise area. Eventually, it's another building, and it's not complying with the rules and regulations they're supposed to have. You know, they they don't follow the CEQA. Consent. Eventually, to do this, as they want, they want to go over the CEQA regulations, and that's what we ask you to support the Friends of the Southwest Museum for the same reason, because we want to bring quality life in our Northeast area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph Young. Is Gene Genevieve Duarte here? Did they speak? Is that the children? Okay. Thank you. Daniel Wright. Joe, go ahead, Joe. Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Reyes. My name is Joe Young, and I'm representing Friends of Griffith Park. Rather than talk about what I'm against, I want to talk about what I'm for. I am for the Autry to continue to operate its beautiful, wonderful facility in Griffith Park and to use its expertise and resources, including grants and endowments, to restore the Southwest Museum to its former wonderful operational status. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, committee members. Daniel Wright on behalf of the Friends of the Southwest Museum. Let the record reflect that I'm turning into the committee a cover letter dated June 2nd. This letter lists the relevant documents to this issue that we placed in both council files 11884 and 11928. Also, I have provided your committee with a copy of pages 3-31 and 32 of the Northeast Community Plan. This portion of the city's general plan contains a fundamental land use policy of the general plan of the city. And here we are for the second time with the Autry having a project proposal that directly contradicts the general plan. The provision in the general plan says that the, the city will support in its discretionary decision making um, the preservation of the present location of the Southwest Museum on Mount Washington. 
That is precisely the policy that got them in trouble the last time. And regardless of what you may hear about the CEQA issues, I, uh, the, you're still going to run into the fact that this is a this is a discretionary decision, contrary to the misrepresentations earlier. This exact provision about the doll, uh, expenditure of dollars was the basis for why they had to do an EIR and on their first plan. So it, it, we, you do have a discretionary decision, and it, you must make a finding under the general plan of consistency, and you cannot make it because these, this particular project proposes to remove the signature exhibits of the Southwest Museum out of Mount Washington in violation of the general plan. Thank I will you very save, much. I'll save my uh, CEQA. Uh, arguments un until we uh, have a hearing on our CEQA appeal. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dr. Stanley Moore, Louis Moratz, Chris Lieb, Christopher Howard. Please sit down and begin speaking. I'm Dr. Stanley Moore, retired university professor from Pepperdine University and a member of the Friends of the Southwest Museum. Uh, this is a planned, brazen, devious way to get around the border referred powers 5 to 0 decision of June 30, 2009, that prohibited expansion of the footprint. This is an internal expansion, taking now private spaces inside the present altar and turning them into public spaces and moving those private activities we assume to the warehouse in Burbank outside the control of the LA City Council. Uh, we now know that the altar never had its $100 million that it promised at the time of the merger. It had a promissory note. That's not an endowment. It has claims that it spent $7.5 million to repair damages to the Southwest Museum. It has not spent any of its money. Four million came from FEMA. Two million came from Feinstein uh, Boxer Bill. And the uh, Southwest Museum came with a $2.9 million endowment. So it is not out money. We would like to retain this, both museums. There's enough artifacts for both to use together. Thank you very much. I'm Louis Mraz. I'm an architect. I live in Mount Washington, and I'm on the board of the Mount Washington Homeowners Alliance. And I met you about 35 years ago. Yeah, you were only 11, right? <laughs> I know. I think I popped your balloon. I'm sorry. You're such a nice guy. <laughs> At the risk of doing it again. <laughs> this is basically about the Southwest Museum. City of L.A. has got to have a certain amount of pride somewhere in its gut for the oldest museum in the town. I mean, it's enough that they throw away a police car when it's three years old because, you know, it's just not nice anymore. Well, that museum is still nice. It's what you see when you drive up the Arroyo Seco Parkway. It used to be the Pasadena Freeway when I was a kid. But basically, we're throwing it away for no reason at all. You've got studies that show that it's a functional museum. It can make more money percentage-wise than the Autry does now. And I don't care how many guys with tassels on their shoes they bring in here, we're all in here for free. We're part of the city, and we want the part of the city to stay. And you guys have the power to actually do that. You can actually tear up the whole thing if you want and start from scratch. Thank you very much, Mr. Lieb. Uh, good morning, Chris Lieb, Chair of the Parks Committee for the Los Feliz Improvement Association. Um, the largest uh, homeowners and oldest homeowners association in Los Angeles, representing over a thousand households in the area. Uh, the LFIA supports the Autry Museum and its historic status as a major and widely accessible museum in Los, Los Angeles' largest park. This is an incredibly valuable collection that we're speaking with that all the people of Los Angeles should have the ability to easily and readily view. Uh, surely this collection deserves to be displayed at the most viable location uh, while the Southwest and the Autry work out their merger issues, which we empathize with. Finally, we had guests here over the weekend from Holland, and when we asked them what they wanted to do, the first thing they said was they wanted to view this collection, and we could not show them this collection because of this uh, snarl. So we encourage you to get the collection displayed at the most capable uh, spot. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.
Hi, good morning. My name is Christopher Howard. I'm a resident of Mount Washington, and I'm here in support of keeping the museum um, open and viable in Mount Washington. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just for the record, Ruth uh, Metbringer, is that correct? You just wanted to be the guy to speak, but you're against you're yes. you're against the proposal. Correct. Linda Miller Smith, also against the proposal, declined to speak. Pat, uh, Roderick Smith, uh, friends of the Southwest Museum, against the proposal, declined to speak. Gail Burns does not want to speak, but is. Against is, you didn't want, against the proposal. Thank you, Gail. Maria Leon, uh, against the proposal. Wanted to be noted for that. Uh, Roy Papillon, Papillon. You want to speak, Roy? I just want to say on behalf of the. You can speak to the. You can speak to the. Either speak to the microphone, or I'm just acknowledge you. I'm trying to get everybody a chance to speak. Many people said they declined to speak. If you want to speak, please come up. Okay, Martha Benedict declined to speak, but uh, as against the proposal. Uh, Al <coughs> Strange, is that correct? Forgive me. You want to speak? Okay, but you will not speak against the proposal. John uh, Langen, against the proposal, declined to speak. Richard Dykes, against the proposal. Do you want to... Uh, does decline to speak but wants it to be noted. Got it. We'll see that as well. Nancy Wyatt declined to speak. Richard Ledesma. You're not noted. You want to speak, Richard? Come on up right now. Let me get the table filled here. Janet Dodson declined to speak. Noted for the file. Charles Fisher. General comments. Okay. And also Carmela. Uh, Gomez, is that correct? If you'd like to speak, please. Thank you very much. We're getting down. Okay, please. Thank you. My name is Richard Ledesma. I've been a resident of the Northeast communities for 37 years. I belong to the second largest post in the state of California, the Los Angeles Police Post 381 and the Commissioner for the State of California Children Youth Commission of the American Legion. And I'm here to support the Friends of the Southwest Museum. I'm here to support these people who supported me 20 years ago when we uh, took on the task of establishing the oldest, the last police station in the city as a museum. And so the community in the Northeast is very proud of its museums, and I'm sure you are too. I think that if uh, Gene Autry was able to get out of his grave, he would come out here and be sitting right next to me supporting the Southwest Museum. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Roy Payan. I'm president of the Montecito Heights Improvement Association. And on behalf of the 2,500 residents of Montecito Heights, I thank uh, Councilman Ed Reyes and LaBonge for, for taking this issue on. My understanding is that the $6.6 .6 million grant was uh, an educational grant but from what I've heard on the testimony of this morning by both the president of, of Autry and, the, and its attorneys um, who by the, by the way are here getting paid while the rest of the community members here are not um, that money was to be used for educational purposes but all I've heard today is their, their usage of this money to be used towards renovations and improvements that doesn't that doesn't equate to education to me um, the Southwest Museum has become a vital part of our community. It's been a vital part of, of our community for, for many decades. As a wounded uh, veteran and a disabled veteran, it's hard for me to get around to, to different places. As a, as a child, I took my daughter to the Southwest Museum many times. Uh, moving, it off, moving the collection off to Griffith Park would put an additional burden on me, as it does to many of the residents of, of the Northeast Los Angeles. This kind of move affects so many uh, elementary schools in the area that in a fiscal uh, uh, with the fiscal burdens that the schools are impacted with currently, they wouldn't be able to take field trips out there. So on behalf of my community, again, thank you, Councilman Reyes, for bringing this issue. Uh, we completely uh, uh, object to this motion by, by Autry. Thank you very much. Charles. I put myself, Charlie Fisher, um, 140 South Avenue, 57 Highland Park. I put myself down for general comments because I do not oppose the um, use of the grant or the uh, changes at the Autry. What we do ask 
is very simple that the city of los angeles put a stipulation in there that the um, autry maintain and support the southwest museum on the site of mount washington as a viable museum i'm entering into the record three documents one is a letter dated january fourteenth two thousand three for shortly after the merger where they announced the merger and the plans to utilize both museums uh... the second is a memorandum dated september two thousand seven to council member Huizar, uh... where the south where the autry states his positions and its vision for the southwest museum uh... the last is the um, resolution by the autry after the last incident in two thousand nine where the autry was asked to do just this where they dug in their heels and i'm going to read the last paragraph from that the autry will not agree to any condition or requirement imposed by the city of los angeles or any third party on the griffith park improvement project or the amendment to the lease which requires the autry to make any commitments financial or otherwise with respect to the southwest museum and mount washington and going back a little further, it states that they will not take directions from any third party. I'm sorry, the city of Los Angeles is not a third party. The city of Los Thank Angeles is a third party. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you. And I'm submitting these. Thank you. Carmela? Good morning. My name is Carmela Gomez. I am president of Highland Park Heritage Trust. Um, and I was uh, responsible for a um, program for teachers that I still teach called The River Runs Through It, and it's the ethnobotanical history of Northeast Los Angeles. At issue is not the value of the work being done by the Autry National Center. At issue is the broken treaty that is the contentious issue. This treaty represents a process that we all live by. It is a very, it is that very process that makes it possible for us all to be here today. And it is this process that is at stake for the city of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Tris Gossett, declined to speak, but you wrote declined to speak. You did, but right here. Okay, thank you very much. I'm trying to get everybody who did that there. Richard Rivera, for the record, declined to speak, but against the proposal. Steve Crouch, declined to speak against the proposal. Uh, we have Catherine Louise. Dora, let me get my glasses here. Dora Herrera, Tina Miller, and Ariel Van. Excuse me, Ariel, is it? Okay, please. Okay. Good morning. My name is Dora Herrera. I'm a Glendale resident and a business owner in the Los Feliz area. Um, I visit everything in Los Angeles, museums, whatever. Uh, I like the Autry, I like the Southwest Museum, and I'd like to see the Autry prosper, but not at the expense of the Southwest Museum, which is a fabulous historical treasure in Los Angeles. Thank, Thank you very much. My name is Tina Galata Miller. I'm a resident of Highland Park. All we are asking is for the original location of the Southwest Museum remain a viable exhibition space for the collection. I am hopeful for a partnership with the Autry National Center and the city representatives as well as community representatives that have been involved for the benefit of our community. And I thank all of you that have been through all of these hearings and all of these testimonies. This grant could be used to rehabilitate the Southwest Museum building and maintain its ability as a vital location as it was originally intended. It's the first museum of Los Angeles. Now what will, it, what will it be when it goes over there? Please don't close the doors of this significant and important cultural treasure. Keep your minds open. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ariel Van Sandrige. I work for the Historical Society of Southern California, and I'm the curator of the Lama's Home. Uh, the museum, the Southwest Museum, was built and founded by, the, by Charles Lamas, who was one of our members. And the collection that is there is a treasure that belongs to the city, to the area, to, to the Montecito Heights area. I often, as my, in my position as a curator of the Lamas home, I frequently receive every, every week two or three inquiries about the Southwest Museum. People coming all the way from Arizona, from Colorado, from New Mexico to visit the Southwest Museum. 
this is an incomplete an income source that could be very useful to the neighborhood if the museums close forever that uh, that would means the death of many businesses in the area i believe that the museum has to be has to kept open no matter what thank you very much catherine louise the last card is catherine louise still here all right thank you very much okay that's complete there on this here we have uh, Marshall McKay filled out a card. Uh, Edward Casey. Uh, here de Leong. Joan Cumming. Good morning, board, Thank you. chairman. Uh, my name is Marshall McKay. I'm the chairman of the Yochadihi Wintu Nation in Northern California, and also the chairman of the Autry Board of Trustees. It is our belief at the Autry that the Southwest Museum collection belongs to the Native American peoples who created it. This collection was created over hundreds of years by thousands of indigenous people. This collection is the Native people's cultural patrimony. The Autry now holds the collection in trust for the benefit of the public. The Native American communities with which the Autry has worked for many years have continually endorsed and financially supported the Autry's commitment to care for and display this collection at Griffith Park. The wonderful $6.6 million grant that we have received from the state will allow us to create a new state-of-the-art exhibitions and displays, making this collection accessible to hundreds of thousands of visitors and the LA School Unified District for generations to come. This was a competitive grant and our applications was fairly considered and as one of the large number of applications. Our application was endorsed in writing by, this, by state legislators, Carol Liu, Mike Gatto, and Speaker Perez. The Autry is proud to be a recipient of this grant along with our sister inst institutions here in Los Angeles, the California Science Center, the National Hist History Museum of Los Angeles County. Thank you, and I appreciate your support and your vote. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joan Cumming. I've been working at the Autry for about two years. I actually wanted to answer Councilman Reyes' question about the grant and why the grant couldn't be used for the CASA or for Thank the you. Southwest Museum. Um, I, I didn't write the grant, but my understanding is the, the grant stipulates that the exhibitions must be open to the public by early January 2017. And as I know Councilman Reyes knows, because he's at the CASA every year, the CASA um, really doesn't have enough of public toilets, it needs plumbing, it needs wiring. The Southwest Museum also is not ADA compliant at this point. So in fact, our grant would have been rejected because uh, the state could have seen that um, the monies would never cover what we had to do with the buildings and would not be focused on the exhibitions. So I hope that answers your question about the grant and why it was our decision to actually apply it to Griffith Park. I appreciate that. Quite welcome. Mr. Leon. Hi. My name is Yadira de Leon. I am employed by the Autry National Center, and I'm here to support the Rec and Parks approval of the Autry's proposal. As an employee and as an, as an individual, a mom, a lover of history and culture, and a Mexican-American living in Los Angeles. The Autry's dedication to telling the stories of the diverse peoples of the American West is something that should be praised and encouraged. Simplifying the argument into cowboys versus Indians has not only been offensive to the people and cultures represented within the Autry galleries, but also to the thousands of visitors who are enriched by the stories told there every day. The exhibitions and events provide a complex look into our society and help us, young and old, from all walks of life, realize how we are all interconnected. Recognizing the importance of the Southwest Museum building and its breathtaking campus, I have full confidence that the Autry will find the right partner to reopen its doors to the public in the future. I urge you to approve this proposal and continue the art community's effort to make Los Angeles the cultural capital of the country. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, members of the committee, Ed Casey again. I will uh, defer my time since I spoke before unless there's any questions that the committee has. Thank you very much, position. Mr. Casey. Lisa Pressler? Yes. Thank you. Against the thank you, Lisa. David Cartwright, Tom Lee, Pamela Hanna, and uh, the, uh, Teddy Borden. 
Is that right? Yeah. Tessie, excuse me, Tessie. I got to get my glasses on, Tessie. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. My name is David Cartwright. I'm uh, the pro bono lawyer for the Autry for the last uh, 25 years. My law firm was also the pro bono lawyers for the creation of the Southwest at the start of the 20th century. And we did the merger. So we have some continuity here. Uh, over 25 years ago, when I first appeared before the council for the Autry, I was a young attorney at O'Melveny. Mayor Tom Bradley and Councilman John Ferraro were the Autry's champions. And I think a young Tom LaBange was part of this project originally as well. Meeting with Gene and Jackie Autry and that august group was fairly intimidating for a young attorney. The Autry's ground lease in Griffith Park ended up before the Board of Referred Powers. And in a telling moment with then Councilman David Cunningham, who was the chairman, a opponent who was urging a fairly unusual position basically said that they didn't want those people in the park. And it was clear to Councilman Cunningham that those people meant various low-income school children and others who might be bussed in to Griffith Park. Well, that dire warning certainly proved to be correct. Every year, the Autry buses in over 50,000 children into Griffith Park to pursue their school curriculum. Every year, Native American playwrights and Native art fairs have attracted thousands of Native and non-Native visitors. Scholars from Yale, Stanford, USC, Occidental, even to Harvard, and their students have spoken, listened, and participated in the programs at Griffith Park from the entire community. Those people who love to celebrate Hispanic culture have enjoyed it. And finally, American Indians will get their chance, finally, to have permanent exhibitions at the Autry and Griffith Park. And that's really what this is all about. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Tom Lee. I'm a trustee of the Autry, and prior to the merger was a trustee of the Southwest Museum. In 2002, the, the Southwest Museum was on the verge of bankruptcy. We simply could not get enough people to come to that location to support our operations there. Also, despite a tremendous effort to raise money to support the museum, we simply could not interest donors in supporting our aging facilities. In a last effort to save the museum and its collection, we issued an RFP, which was responded to only fully by the Autry, which led to our merger agreement. And since that time, the Autry has done everything and more than anybody could have asked for to comply with the terms of that agreement and to support and care for that wonderful collection. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Pam Hanna, Director of American Indian Outreach and Programs at the Autry National Center. I started at the Southwest Museum in 1994 as a member, docent, and volunteer, and then later joined the staff in 1998. So I've been directly involved with this amazing collection and institution for more than 17 years. I'm also Osage. I'm, Amer I'm an American Indian living in the, in the community of Los Angeles, which has the largest urban American Indian population in the country. Every day I work with American Indian people from here and across the nation. And I can tell you that from our point of view, the most important concern is that the South Coast Museum collection is respected, preserved, protected, displayed, and accessible to us as well as all, all non-Indian people, to all of us. Over the past eight years, the Autry has proven its commitment time and time again that it's doing just that. The Autry has and continues to receive support from the American Indian community, and that includes our most respected leaders like Marshall McKay and then Val Buena, also on our board, as well as other countless tribes, organizations, and individuals. The Indian community wants the collection exhibited, accessible, and shared with everyone in a respectful way. The project before you does just that, and it does it in an extraordinary way. The project deserves your, your support, and our culture deserves your support. Thank you very much. Hello. My name is Tessie Borden, and I am a resident of Mount Washington, as well as an employee of the Autry. I have been a visitor to the Southwest Museum since 1999, so I had a chance to see its condition before the merger. I began at the Autry as a volunteer in 2009, 
and working here for the past two years i have seen both the painstaking work that the conservators are doing on the southwest artifacts collection and the commitment everyone else here has to preserving this important piece of los angeles history i also get to see almost every day during the school year the faces of l a u s d students by the bus full as they learn about that history which is their own history i love the southwest museum building and i appreciate its historic status but having been there i know it could never uh, properly serve all those children there is just not enough room it is too inaccessible and it cannot house this wonderful collection without preventing it from turning to dust i know no one here wants that what the autry is trying to do is improve its ability to tell the stories of all the different people who live in this wonderful place i really believe that and the grant is a way to do it and to let more people see more of the southwest collection but in a way that will ensure its future i very much believe the southwest museum building historic as it is still has a place in our mount washington community it truly is a cultural jewel for all of us but like historic buildings in other communities its role has to change in order to remain vital just because the southwest museum is historic doesn't mean it has to stay stuck in history thank you thank you very much uh last two cards are luke uh, Sweetland and Dan Finley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Reyes. Good morning. My name is Luke Sweetland. I'm Vice President for Exhibitions at the Autry. As the city staff has indicated, the matter before you is a simple review and approval of construction work at the Autry per provision of our land lease. Our opponents are attempting to bring to bear issues that simply are not relevant. Our opponents are arguing that particular exhibitions, exhibitions related to the history of native peoples of California, must be presented at the Southwest, not at the Autry and Griffith Park. Let me be clear, the Autry cannot open these exhibits at the Southwest, given the terms of the grant. If these exhibits are not opened at the Autry, the story won't be told, the collections will stay in storage, $6.6 .6 million is lost. Our opponents are playing a dangerous game of brinksmanship. And if they prevail, the city and its kids lose. Would the city demand that MOCA open an exhibit at the Geffen Contemporary instead of its Grand Avenue facility? Absolutely not. Where MOCA opens its exhibits and what exhibits those are is solely MOCA's decision. If the city votes to stop the op tree from opening exhibits at its Griffith Park facility, the city takes an unprecedented step, reaching into an arts organization and dictating what its curatorial vision should be. That would be an unconscionable impairment of intellectual freedom. It would skirt dangerously close to censorship. Thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Mr. Finley. Mr. Chairman, allow me to attempt to address uh, Council Member Reyes' uh, questions. Uh, to be clear, there is a, a deadline for the project. We have a, con there, a contract with the state must be in place no later than July 12, 2011. And this, if not, the state has the option at that point to rescind the grant. So we want to execute that agreement with the state by uh, beginning by July 1st so we can get the paperwork uh, in order. The state demands that the project be open to the public by December 31st, 2016. I do want to make very clear that the remodeling project is contained completely within our existing facility. We are taking about 15,000 square feet of public spaces that have not been updated for more than 20 years, and this includes 2,500 square feet in the original plans for the Autry that was designed as a gallery, but we had been using it for storage, and we want to now return it to its original intent. Museums routinely receive funding to update exhibitions, and this is all this is. The money will allow us to install new cases, lighting, interpretive, and educational tools, and interactive opportunities. I do uh, want to thank you for your support here today, and as part of my testimony, I want to enter into the record the, the award letter from the state of California uh, indicating the deadlines. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank everybody for participating in this process. Uh, my biggest disappointment that I heard from the city council the other day is that the process, which was uh, uh, available at the Board of Recreation and Parks Commission due to a glitch, was not completed uh, by any notification. In addition to that, Recreation and Parks has a very uh, good method of trying to go to all parts of the city. And in a case like this, it was, I believe, in Cheviot Hills. Is that correct, Mr. 
Muckry, the meeting, and which was an unfortunate because I'd rather have it in the metro area. That being said, a hearing has been held, and I'm glad we got all that opinions. I have some questions. I'm going to ask Mr. Reyes to ask some questions, and I'm going to ask the Sergeant of Arms if you could notify the President of the City Council that we're in this meeting, and in case one of us or both of us have to go to quorum, we could go from there. Thank you. Mr. Reyes. Well, first, thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, allowing this committee uh, to be conducted. I want to thank the audience for being here on both sides. Uh, my sense of hope is that uh, we understand and have heard it that there is no sense of, uh, I'm going to put this, hate or anti archery. I don't, I don't see that. What I see is a frustration of trying to make a community whole. How those details have worked itself out has been a part of the uh, tension that we've seen over the years. And I appreciate the answers that uh, was given to me on why um, Casa de Adobe and Southern Museum was not included in the application. I really do. But it also makes me aware that the reason why this grant doesn't qualify or in your estimation would not allow you to win in this competition is because there has been no investment in the facilities since it's been shut down. And it put us in this position not to qualify for this grant. So there is an essence of, of how we move together as a community. No one wins by having this antagonistic relationship. We really need to figure out, together with the city family, how we bring the first museum of the city of Los Angeles to life. Charles Lummis, who put his house on the Royal, who spent his life building this museum, because he wanted to preserve all that is valuable of our indigenous peoples in the northern continent so that we can learn about our own identity is crucial. From my point of view, growing up in Cypress Park, if it wasn't for the Southern Museum, I would think that, which is important to me, is only the issues that are brought forth by the gangs. But going to Southern Museum as a six-year-old, as an eight-year-old, as a ten-year-old, Seeing that tunnel come back to life 20 years ago gave me a sense of purpose in terms of my identity as a Mexican-American, as a Chicano, as a person who knows and understands the tribulations of indigenous people. That's all we want. So at this stage of the process, I want to continue to see how we can work together. Mr. Finley, I, I, I've only met a couple of times. I understand you have a job to do. Uh, I don't want to be antagonistic with you. Uh, I just need to, for us to open up a dialogue that speaks to how we can get those who have the wherewithal in this region to bring back to life a South of Museum. That's all we want, and Casa de Lobe. That's all we're asking for. Yes, it's going to take millions of dollars, but I see us spending millions of dollars on stadiums, on other things that make you wonder, what are we supporting here as our part of our culture. So I would do as the city attorney and I would like to get a report back before the council meeting specific to Prop 84. Can we or can we not get an extension on these deadlines so that we can reach a different level of understanding and how we leverage our resources that are government funds on these projects. I'm asking for a very specific question to be answered. May I ask a clarification? Please. Though? What would be the purpose of the deadline? Because if the purpose is to try to expand the scope of the project to incorporate some of the desires of, of, of whatever has been brought up by the community, the scope cannot be extended because it was a competitive process. Okay. And that selection process is over. And uh, the state would not open, uh, would not give the museum the opportunity to change that scope if it's an expansion because that would be unfair to the other 300 applicants that were considered in the competition. I appreciate your question from a legal technical term. Uh, why we should or shouldn't expand it? Let us, let myself as a policymaker give you an answer later. At this stage of the process, I just want to know. 
if we have that flexibility. Thank you. That's it. Okay. So everybody take a little breath. Within an hour. Uh, everybody has a value. Uh, the great thing about serving on the city council with Mr. Reyes, he grew up in one part of Los Angeles, I grew up in another part of Los Angeles. And we have a great honor to serve the people and listen to the people and try to make the right decisions and try to focus on from what we saw mostly as children, as Ed mentioned there. My greatest joy in life, among many joys, is when you go to a location and see a sea of yellow school buses. Great joy. Exposition Park, Griffith Park, anywhere there's big lots where people could have come into there. In your neighborhood, and I think when I first worked in your neighborhood was in 1976 when I was working for Peggy Stevenson because it was a parking problem at Garland G. Smith Rec Center in Mount Washington. And it's still a parking problem today, I'm sure, in the neighborhood. The challenges. The challenges of an older district. The challenges of a facility that was built there when nothing else was around. My challenge is right now is to weigh this situation out. I see this as uh, if that is the structure, that area right there is a structure. They applied for a grant to fix within that structure, not to expand the structure, but fix what's in this structure. The same application period, I understand, the Department of Recreation and Parks Foundation, which is a very applied for a grant for the historic Commonwealth Yard, which is a great native uh, plants, nursery on the other side of Griffin Park. A little more dollars in this, I believe. They were rejected, which, uh, in all truth, I would like to have got that money for the historic museum, which some of the people complained because it was going to bring people to that area. Some of the people complained that it was become an educational nursery and et cetera, and it would house the foundation. Okay, you have competitive grants, you go forward. The other day in city council, because of the situation, many members felt that there was not a hearing. A hearing now has taken place. And I know everybody took their time this morning on this here. What I have to weigh on is what is what I think is right. What I think is right, if someone goes through a grant process, and it's not reviewed by us, but that by the state, they awarded the grant to Autry. And I don't have the full list of all the grants throughout the state, but I'm sure a lot of people were disappointed that they didn't get their grants or whatever it is. But what I would like to propose, if I could, as the chairman of this committee, uh, and I do support the grant and do support the approval of the grant because I want to see people working. I want to see the displays. I want to see the capabilities. But I also understand how you love Highland Park and its history. And the person I want to give a shout out to is Clark Robbins because Clark Robbins was a deputy city engineer. And I talked to Clark Robbins and say, Clark, there's one thing you got to do. I was on the board of the LAPD Historical Society. I'm a friend of the fire department. I said, squeeze the money into the bond that restored the historic buildings and bridges for the city so that you could restore the Highland Park Police Station, that you could restore the Hollywood Fire Station, which was so important. Without that money, you can't restore it. Somehow we, Mr. Reyes and Mr. Weezar and others, have to find a way to bridge this here. Whether it's the Autry, USC, UCLA, or any other institution, they have to look and make a decision on what they feel they're capable of doing as far as the future and the accessibility and what can be created. So what I would like to ask, unless there's other any information, that this go back to the city council for the, him to hear the facts that a hearing was held and uh, dispute was right. there. But what I would, just let me say, Ed, here, what I'd like to say to the people who I do know is I would like to work on issues of this for the Southwest in the future, whether it's the Autry or someone else. Because what happens, too, in many parts of the older part of my district, old historic buildings get transformed with new love from other institutions. But it takes a lot. I worked when I first got elected, I said, there's one thing I want to do. I want to save the land west of the Hollywood sign, 138 acres. It took seven years and good luck and hard work and dollars from the public and the trust for public land to acquire that open space. That nothing's going to be on that mountain, which is so important. That was one of my golden objectives. Mr. Reyes, a great champion of the river and the Arroyo and all things in the district that he serves. And we share in that. Uh, upstream. I'm fortunate my part of the river has more natural because of the water tables. That all being said, 
as we go forward, we can look at this as a point, Mr. Finley, that I would want to work with you on issues in the future. I do support the grant because when you lose the grant, and I've seen this before, you lose it. And it doesn't happen. And I think within the confines of the building, and to, and to hear what their chair of their board, who's also a, a First Nations person, a Native American, how important it is to display this, that is key. So what I would like to say, unless the city attorney has another uh, recommendation, that we would send this back to council to state that we did have a public hearing, that in the public hearing, everyone had a chance to speak. At that time, there's still some people who feel a little different, but also ask the CLA for some direction to get on a track to address the issues that you made, Mr. Reyes, mm -hmm. that, that could not, as the city attorney said, be in conjunction right. with this grant. And uh, Mr. Chair, in the spirit of the uh, democratic process, right. there's always uh, two sides of the coin. So from this committee, I would recommend uh, to disapprove of the action of the Board of Recreation and Parks and move the matter of the full council as well. So that we can have that healthy debate and we can have that capacity to discuss within the relevancy of this item issues that pertain to the whole city and how we are treating the first museum ever built in the city of Los Angeles. So I disagree with you, Mr. Reyes, on that. So what I'm going to do is continue this matter and schedule it for our regular meeting, which is next week, to get advice from our city attorney. This will be on the agenda item because we have a difference, too. Right. Mr. Reyes and I, I want to get city attorney's opinion. I believe this is all about the grant, which is before us, and I want to make sure the council is clear on that. So I did schedule at this meeting to take, because I knew this may or may not happen, and they have deadlines. And uh, even the state, even the state sweeps money back, and, and you know the challenge of the state. And our next committee meeting is for next Tuesday. Uh, council member, the next uh, arts meeting is going to be on June 14th. What about the first one? Uh, the first question, because Ms. Schechter said next Tuesday is the next meeting. Uh, no, uh, our meetings are held on the second and right. fourth Tuesday, so the next scheduled arts, parks, health, and aging meeting would be on June 14th. Right. Well, I would like to then, uh, the what I'm going to do, just to let everybody know, I want to consult with the city attorney. Uh, and what, what I have to do as chair is sign off on this if it goes to council. If I feel comfortable that there could be a, uh, a discussion uh, as, as the chair sees it, fine. If I don't, we'll schedule it again, Ed. Okay. Sounds okay? good. Sounds good. So, right. so as right now, I'm gonna, I want to consult with our city attorney specifically and recreation and parks attorney uh, to make sure that we're going at this at the right way. Because I believe what's before us is the grant that the commission had a hearing on that awarded the that the state awarded the money to but they have to get approval from the city mr reyes has a somewhat of a difference of opinion uh as chair i have that ability to get more information and then make the right decision okay we'll make sure we get copies of everybody's uh uh, uh no, notification on this if there's an email tree or so everybody could go I'll make sure you get the email yeah. uh, because I I would make sure that I don't know what happened the last time. So, uh, Councilman yeah. Lebrons, I think it's yeah we're both looking for a decision, whether it's right or wrong. I think the majority will will dictate that. So I look forward to that discussion. Okay, the only other person, Dr. Williams, you filled out a card. So, Dr. Williams, for the first time in the history, will not make public comment. This meeting's oh. adjourned. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Gracias.